Hello, everybody, and welcome. Uh, this is Bennett Tchaikovsky. Hello. I'm here to uh, give you some walkthroughs of uh, Wiley, and we're now moving on to the 18th edition. So for this 18th edition, chapter four of the, or see, chapter four of the 17th edition is now chapter three of the 18th edition. Exciting news. And good news, everybody. Okay, here we go. So this is exercise 3-12. This is Intermediate Accounting 18th Edition textbook. Authors are Don Kiso, Jerry Wangan, and Terry Warfield. The question used in the presentation is a copyright by 2022 by John Wiley and Sons. All rights are reserved. Uh, this is for educational purposes only. Not sure why else you would use it. Uh, the video may not be distributed or redistributed without the express permission of Wiley. Solution presentation is copyright 2022 by Bennett Tchaikovsky. All rights are reserved. The opinions contained within as well as the dad jokes are those of Bennett Tchaikovsky, not the authors of the textbook or of Wiley. Okay, let's get to it. Before we say thank you to the bus driver, come over right over here. So we've got exercise 3-12. So we've got Eddie Zambrano Corporation began operations on January 1st, 2022. During its first three years of operations, Zambrano reported net income and declared dividends as follows. So one of the things you're going to see me do, and you probably have been watching me do in my videos, is I like to use T accounts. And the reason why is we have assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity, which is our balance sheet equation. We've got debits, we've got credits, right? And then we have E and R. So over here, liabilities and equity accounts will typically have credit balances. They're going to be increased with credits and then decrease with credits. When we're looking at retained earnings, remember what is retained earnings? It is the special link between our income statement and then our balance sheet. And let me just show you really quickly. So when we look at over here at the Home Depot, and this is, we're just looking at their quarterly reports or their quarterly report for the uh, three and six months ended July 31st, 2022. So if we come over here, we see retain earnings, right? So this is how we, we have our income statement. All temporary accounts tells us what we earn during a particular period of time. And then basically that net income is going to get closed out to retained earnings. So when I look at this over here, we've got 67.5 billion and it ended up at 73 billion. So this is roughly an increase of about 5.5 billion. If we come down over here and look, we see over here, we've got net earnings right over here for the six months ended was about 9.4 billion. Now, the real big question becomes is we say over here and say, hmm, well, if our net income was 9.4 billion, certainly uh, 67 billion plus 9.4 does not equal 73 billion. So what is that difference? If we come down over here and we start going through and we want to start going through and trying to find our uh, payment of a dividend. Right, so over here we have cash dividends of about 3.9 billion. So for those folks at home looking for something fun to do, if we took our net income and then we subtracted out the cash dividends, then really what we would be going through and looking at is that change in retained earnings. So when we have our, our retained earnings, retained earnings is an owner's equity account. Therefore, this is basically gonna have a credit balance and what we'll typically go ahead and do is we'll have our beginning retained earnings, right? What's going to increase our retained earnings? It's going to be our net income. What will decrease our retained earnings? It is going to be our dividends, okay? And then when we subtract the dividends from the net income and the beginning retained earnings combo, we're going to get our ending retained earnings. Now, if we were running at a deficit, that would be something else, but we're positive right now. Let's stay positive. Okay. So let's come over here. So we've got Eddie Zambrano. So you're going to see me do this with T accounts just because I think it's a better visual representation in terms of how to go through and solve these problems. So right over here, we've got began operations on January 1st. So retain earnings on 1122 is going to be zero, right? So that's going to be zero right there because it's the first year of operations. We're going to have our net income. Our net income was 40000 So basically, what does that mean? We had zero dividends. So our ending retain earnings is going to be $40,000. Now, this for this retain earnings, right? The ending balance of retain earnings 
becomes the beginning balance of the next period. So over here, we're going to have 1123. Now remember, for this question, we're asked to prepare a 2025 retain earnings statement for Eddie Zambrano, but we don't know what beginning retain earnings are for 2025. We can't figure this out unless we figure out beginning retain earnings. So that's why we're starting over here. We're going to basically build up to that balance. Okay. So my ending balance as of 1231.22 becomes the beginning balance of the following year. So here I had 125,000 of net income, but then I paid dividends. My dividends for 2023 were $50,000. Now, remember, it's not about whether dividends are paid. It's going to be whether dividends are declared. That's really what we're looking for. It doesn't matter if they're paid. Is it have they been declared? That's what is going to be reducing our retained earnings. So over here, our beginning retained earnings plus our net income minus our dividends is going to give us an ending balance here of 115000 And that's going to be as of 1231, uh, 12 31, 23. Now we come over here, we've got retain earnings. Now my ending balance becomes my beginning balance of the next year. So this is going to be 115,000. My net income was 160. And then over here, my dividends for 2024 were 50,000. So my beginning plus retain plus my net income minus my dividends is going to give me my ending retained earnings, okay? So that's what takes us through for 2024. Now we're ready to go kind of go through and tackle 2025. Well, we're going to start right over here on 1125 with 225,000. Now, what this question does is let's go through and kind of take a look at 2025. One of the things we see over here with retained earnings is an understatement of depreciation expense before taxes. Now, whenever we're on the statement of retained earnings and we see something we call a prior period adjustment, what we have to go through and do is to show that net of tax, right? So when we're doing our statement, that's going to be net of tax. So as we look at this over here, um, probably the best way to kind of go through and do this is we'll say that our beginning retained earnings was 225000 less the prior period adjustment. And this is going to be 25000 times 80%. Where do we get this from? Well, this is going to be 25000 pre-tax minus this is going to be 5,000 or 25,000 times 20% is going to give us 20,000 after tax. So this would be prior period adjustment and we can call this net of tax. Now, why are we calling this net of tax? Because whenever we see net income or we see retained earnings, this has already had the taxes taken out. So this is going to give us beginning retained earnings as adjusted. So this over here is our beginning retained earnings as adjusted. Now, we come over here and we're now ready to kind of go through and get in business. Now, if we wanted to go ahead and do this on a T account, we certainly can, but we're going to be showing this over here. This prior period adjustment is going to be shown as a debit to retain earnings because it's reducing it. Remember, if I didn't record enough depreciation expense over here, didn't record enough, it was understated right? Didn't overstate it, but I understate it. That means I have to record more, which is going to reduce my retained earnings balance. So this is my prior period adjustment of 20,000. Now, when it comes over here to the income before income tax, that's also tricky, right? So we're going to have our net income after tax. This number here is going to be 240,000 times 0.8. Where do we get this number from? We've got 240,000 pre-tax minus 240,000 times 20%, which is going to be 48,000 or 
240,000 times 20% is going to be 192 net income after tax, right? So if we take 240, we multiply that by 22, we're going to get 48,000. Okay, so right over here, that's going to be our net income after tax. Then we have over here, we have dividends declared of this amount. 25,000 will be paid on January 15, 2026. We don't care about that. We care about dividends declared. So this is going to be net income after tax, less dividends declared. And this over here is going to be 100,000. So our ending retained earnings is going to be my beginning plus my net income minus my dividends or roughly about 297,000. Okay, so just to kind of refresh this over here, so we had our beginning retained earnings balance, right? Minus our prior period adjustment. Again, we had a $25,000. We understated our depreciation. That's going to show us a subtraction. So our beginning retained earnings as adjusted is going to be 205000 Then we're going to add our net income. But remember, this says income before income taxes. When we're dealing with retained earnings, it's always going to be after tax. So we're going to go ahead and subtract out that tax amount. And so we're going to get over here this 192. And then our dividends declared. Don't care about if it's been paid or not. So we'll call this E. So then the beginning plus the net income after taxes minus the dividends is going to give us our ending retained earnings. Okay, so over here, we've got 192. And we did dividends of 100,000. So our ending retained earnings is going to be 297. Okay, so over here, assume Eddie's Umbrano Corporation restricted Retain earnings in the amount of $70,000 on December 31st, 2025. After this action, what would Zombrano report as its total retain earnings in its 20, December 31st, 2025 balance sheet? Well, it's still going to show $297,000. That's not going to change. However, if the board of directors took action to say, okay, well, we're going to set aside a certain amount for a certain type of project, what we're going to go through and do is we're going to say over here, retained earnings. We're going to show appropriated. And then we're going to show unappropriated. And what is appropriated means? It means we're setting aside $70,000 for some sort of a special future project. So we've got this two seventy thousand. So that means that the amount of the free retained earnings is going to be 227,000. So my total retained earnings is still going to be 297. It's just when it comes to the disclosure, that's how it's going to be shown. Now, in real life, have I seen retain earnings being appropriated? Not very often, but this is might be something where the examiners or at least Wiley, and that's why I really like their questions, uh, they might be going through and giving you something on this. So this is how it is. I would really recommend, and I've I've spoken with a few different students about this, uh, recently, they're studying for the CPA exam and they're not too happy. The thing I would tell you about learning accounting is remember your friends like this one right over here. This is your T account. And by the way, too, you have to learn this material. If you're not learning, if you're in this, if you're if you're in this watching this video, <laughs> you don't take accounting courses for your health. You're taking them to become a CPA. And the way that you're going to want to practice in getting ready for the CPA exam, I like physically writing it out. And that's what I have most of my students go through and do. But this is the reason why is because by putting it down on pencil to paper, you're going to be going through and committing it to muscle memory. By going through and practicing these questions again and again, you're going to get better and better at the questions. Just remember the T accounts can really help you go through and solve a lot of different things. This is the statement of retained earnings. Remember, it has a credit balance. It's part of owner's equity. It's how the netting, how the income statement links up to that balance sheet. So in any event, I want to thank you uh, for joining me here today. I also want to thank Wiley. So Wiley is very awesome, and I don't say this enough, but Wiley has generously allowed me to make videos from both the 17th and 18th edition as some as well as some of their other textbooks. 
And I think this is great for students. So huge hats off to Wiley. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. If you're looking for any types of other solutions, feel free to ask for them in the comments. Have a great day.